Good morning, Denver. Today we have Austin Fadery, real ICP OG, uh, very experienced as long, long time in the ecosystem. Austin, tell us a little bit more about your journey. What brought you to Web3? How did you start with the internet computer? Sure. So uh, I was recruited by uh, uh, Mike Schwartz, one of my partners at, uh, at Pan Industrial, to come help him at Boston Consulting Group Digital Ventures do web free projects back in 2017. Uh, and Dom was there presenting uh, Definity at that time in 2017. And so since then, we've been uh, working, trying to uh, onboard corporations and, and big businesses onto web three. Now, we thought in 2018, uh, the internet computer's about to ship and uh, we could start this company. And so we, we did that. Uh, and then of course it took a while to, for the internet computer to actually ship. Uh, and so uh, we, we, we learned a lot, a lot talking to large corporates about Web3, what do they need? And it's scalability, 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 and then enterprise grade tools. So we, we feel like we really know what they need. And then when the internet computer shipped, we started building those tools uh, through a couple different organizations, uh, previously at, at Origin, uh, Origin Foundation, and uh, now through Pan Industrial. Um, I also founded icdevs.org at the beginning at uh, Genesis uh, of the internet computer to help developers and to help build basic libraries and do education and research. So kind of been all over both at the down in the weeds with developers, trying to help them build and build little Lego blocks that we can use to build applications on the internet computer, as well as up in the enterprise space, really talking to CIOs and CTOs about their needs for their corporate systems and, uh, and, and how Web3 can help them. So yours uh, has been an amazing journey in, in Web3 with the internet computer. Any highlight, any beautiful moment you recall any, any obstacle or, or hurdle you face in this journey? Sure, well, you know, it, the, the, the obstacles was, was at the beginning, it took a while to ship. And nobody really understands how much blood, sweat and tears went into the protocol, I don't think. Uh, and, and how much just incredible knowledge went into it. So that was tough to wait for. And then when it came out, it, it still wasn't quite done. You know, and, and I think everybody realizes that there were still, there were things that were promised that weren't there. But the joy has been seeing the Definity team do what they say they're going to do. Yeah. Shipping HTTP outcalls, shipping TECDSA, shipping vet keys. It's great to have a platform that actually ships and actually delivers on what they say they're going to do. Now we're getting finally getting orthogonal persistence in Matoko. And we're like, you know, we're dancing on the dancing on the ceilings uh, over over that one. So uh, that, that's, that's, that's been the, the fun part. You know, of course we have so far to go, but, uh, it's, it's great to know that there's a solid foundation, um, solid backing. And, you know, we, we, that we have the confidence to walk into a fortune 100 company and say, this is the platform you should use. Indeed. And by the way, uh, a few days ago, uh, if not yesterday, depending on the time zone, mm -hmm. the new roadmap was released for 2025. Mm. And it's very, a very comprehensive, compelling, yes. uh, very builder and developer oriented. So yes. uh, there's great call for even more shipping. Yeah, I, I, 2035. I, I, I saw the post and I haven't had a chance to watch it, but I'm very, very excited to watch it and see what, what you guys have prioritized. Thanks. Let's look at the future now. Okay. Uh, what's up with Pan Industrial? Uh, tell us a little bit more about it, what it is, how it works. What are the plans? Any roadmap um, sure. on the line? So as I mentioned, we've been working on this problem for eight years or more. And we really, we, we know that we can save industry billions of dollars. One of our core tenets is this idea of shared data spaces and allowing industries to build pan industry platforms where suppliers, vendors, customers can co-locate data with privacy and just reduce audit costs massively, right? And, uh, and operate permissionlessly and have governance and 
true neutral governance that's owned by the corporations in an industry that's really decentralized. All of those things can be built on the internet computer today. And so Pan Industrial is doing that. We have three sort of verticals of where we're, where we're working. The first is the kind of what I would call like our labs group, uh, where it's basically me hacking away on my computer. We just shipped our alpha of our platform we call Icabus, uh, which is I-C-A-I bus. And if you know anything about enterprises, they use these things called enterprise buses to reduce the integration costs across their organization. If you have 200 third-party systems, you don't want to have to go wire up each system oh, to every other system. So an enterprise bus is really, it's a pubs, publish subscribe bus. And we've allowed on the internet computer now, you can write one line of code to monetize the data in your DAP. That's right? amazing. So you write one line of code to publish your data, and then people can start write one line of code to subscribe. And if it's a private data feed, they can pay a subscription. If it's a public data feed, we have a tokenomics uh, mechanism for people to bid on priority delivery of the data. So you can see how uh, we share that with the people who are publishing the data. So if you are publishing a DAP and you want to monetize that data, you can, you can do that now and, and right away have in, an instant way to monetize your DAP. Now that, that's the immediate Web3 use case. It's very important for enterprise to have that functionality as well because they want private data feeds that they can emit across a chain, whether it be a public chain. This also would work on, a, on, a, on an instance, like a Utopia instance as well, just amongst the industry players. We want our system to listen to your system's events. We don't have to talk to each other about integration. You just give us the spec and we'll subscribe and we'll start being able to react to your data in real time. So that's built in our labs and we're building all kinds of enterprise tools there. Then we have our services division. We work with like big four accounting firms, management consulting firms. They take us to their clients and we run these uh, platform sprints where we seek out the value chain of the customer we identify volume of cash or users or data, and we then help them launch Web3 platforms, kind of dip their toe in to the Web3 space. Now, AI has been a godsend here because it's, yeah. been, it's been a hard journey. They're scared of Web3. They don't want their data co-located. Uh, but AI has been a godsend because they're, they know they have to act. In a way or another, they got to they, embrace it, right? They have, they have to embrace it. And it puts us in a place where we know once they have AI integrated, they're going to want their agents and their AI systems to talk to their suppliers or their vendor systems, but they're not going to trust each other. So there's going to be a massive trust gap amongst enterprise AI. And what's the solution to trust, to trust problems? Blocks. Blockchain and Web3. So it puts us in a great spot to utilize all the all the knowledge that we've accumulated over the last few years in Web3 and, uh, and, and go do that uh, and help them make that connection. Yeah. And then the third is, of course, you know, a fund, right? We're, we're raising a fund uh, uh, and looking to invest in those platforms that we help corporates build for. So. Amazing. Yeah. It's also uh, interesting how AI in a certain way is becoming a catalyst around blockchain mm -hmm. and, and whoever will be able to make the most of it. Yep. Uh, we'll have a uh, big chance of success. Yeah. Yeah. But you're also famous in the ecosystem and beyond for IC devs. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about it. Sure. And what's next uh, with this initiative of yours? Sure. So we just shipped two things in IC devs that I'm really excited about. Wow. Uh, the, f uh, the first was our ICRC 99 NFT router that lets us move NFTs from any EVM to an ICRC7 compliant NFT on the internet computer. It can then trade gaslessly on the, uh, on the IC. You can then also sling it to any other EVM. So if you have a mainnet NFT, but you want to list it on OpenSea on base that has lower fees, you just sling it through the internet computer wow. and it's all trustless. 
and uh, it uses, use, uses TECDSA and it can use multiple uh, EVM RPC. So you, you have this sort of trustless Oracle feature that, that we're able to do on the internet computer. So you're checking like three different independent data sources to make sure that you, the person who owns that NFT actually owns the NFT and then and it, and it keeps it all nice and secure. We also just completed all of the op codes for a Matoko EVM. Uh, and, and so the next step there is to build a, uh, the actual memories and execution engines for an EVM so that you can deploy, you know, we envision people deploying ethereal EVMs, like at very app specific EVMs on the internet computer. Uh, and being able to customize those and, you know, probably plug in some of the goodies for the internet computer on the back end. And uh, we're probably going to try to raise some money and get coin grants again. We've, we've been raising through the through that Ethereum ecosystem with Definity's help uh, in the past. And now, we've, now we're on to that next phase. So I'm excited to uh, help developers come and, and, and build and help fund them to do that and do that research and and then educate folks on how to use it. And uh, I don't know, we're, we're, we're looking at how to really permanently fund IC deaths. And I'm thinking maybe hopefully with the new sort of environment here in the US, we will actually be able to do that in, a, in the web three way that we want to yeah. uh, uh, with the new regulations and even the new statements coming out just yesterday about meme coins Saw it. Um, and things like that. So. You know, I, I would imagine maybe there'll be an IC devs meme coin that you have no financial incentives or rewards. It's just, hey, if you if you have this token, you're I'm you're a good, yeah. you're a good citizen yeah. and in the Web3 ecosystem and you've helped fund wow. uh, public goods uh, in the Internet computer ecosystem. So we're excited about that. So this is great war. Phenomenal for adoption. So congratulations. How do you see the industry? Uh, this is the last question, I promise. Uh, Moving on, let's say in, in, in the short term, the middle term, uh, especially with regards of, you know, everything that's happening with AI, people talking about disruption, people talking about adoption, there's all sort of theory now uh, about what's going to happen. Uh, quickly, what's your take? It's going to get weird for developers. A little bit, right? <laughs> right. Um... We can stop fighting over which language we should use because we're not going to be writing the code anymore. In fact, right. I think in a couple of years, you, people will not want humans writing the code. Like it's going to be more secure to have the agent, you know, the AI agents writing the code. They'll be more careful. They'll have less bugs. They'll actually write tests, all of those things. Uh, so we're going to have to get creative for developers and uh, developers are going to become more of uh, more visionaries. They're going to be able to direct um, direct these systems towards the world that they want to build. Like I said, AI coming on board for for enterprise, they're going to need a trust layer. Yeah. So I think we have an awesome opportunity to build the tr those trust layers. R right now, everybody's looking at the AIs. They want to run AIs on chain. They want to you know integrate private AI. Everybody's looking at the AIs. A lot of the opportunity for Web3 is between the AIs. Yes. Right. Shift your focus a little bit, fuzz your eyes, and look at what's going to happen in between the AIs. I think that is where Web3 is going to have most of its value as opposed to actually looking directly at the AIs. There, there's, I mean, there's opportunity. There's gold coins on the ground everywhere. Like, we got to pick everywhere. them up. But, but that's what we're focused on is providing those tools to help the AIs communicate trustlessly, uh, and, and remove all of that overhead and, and it, let, it, let it be safe and secure for enterprise. And then that trickles down to the rest of Web3 and, and consumers as well. So. Thank you very much, Austin. This was great insight. Yeah. Austin Fathery, in Denver, ICP yeah. booth. Thanks, guys. <laughs>